Hello, my lovelies. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys that are new, welcome. My name is Pinky and teaching you tarot and witchcraft is what I do. For those of you guys returning, welcome back, my lovelies. Here we are doing the Tarot Lessons 101 with the Miners. And we are kicking it off with the Wands suit, which is the element of fire. Now, fire is action. It is passion. It is moving forward. It is all to do with work. It is all to do with effort and energy. Um, it is a beautiful, powerful element. And um, let's get into it. Like I was mentioning, wands represents fire and action. Think of how fire moves. It can be a steady flame, it can be an ember, or it can be a grand explosion that knocks the air out of you. The wands begins with the essence of the flame, steady, confident, and full of potential. Like we spoke in previous lessons, all aces are the full potential. It is all to do with the possibilities. We go from one all the way to the 10 of that suit, which is the very beginning, the initial stages, the massive potential, and 10, a culmination. The wands begins with the essence of flame, like I was saying, steady, confident, and full of potential. From one to the four, the energy is building, making things grow. Five is sticky, the fire is getting bigger, and the number of people adding to the situation grows and could get out of hand. Six levels out, and seven is when you become the boss. As always, there's challenges. This has a fallout as well. What does your team think of you being the boss? Are you ready? Eight is movement, spreading warmth around and making choices. Nine is fulfillment. You have plenty and 10 is too much. You can handle it. You can control it. If the ace of wands is a steady burn, the 10 is a wild fire. So again, like I said, aces are always the massive potential, right? It is the very beginning. It is the seed of that element of fire. And from that, think of all the cards that follow. They are all being represented here with the Ace of Wands. It is within this energy of the Ace of Wands. In magic, wands are used to help you focus your power and take action. In the basic Ace of Wands, you can see a castle in the distance, a goal in the deck. You've got to work to get there. The wand is given to you, which could be interpreted as the universe handing you some good luck or good karma. But what you do with it is up to you. If you want to reach the castle, you'd better get focused and get moving. It's a heck of a head start, though. Aces are always a new beginning, a new endeavor. Staves, rods, pipes, or clubs, all the same. The ace of wands is succeeding beyond your dreams sometimes even against reason. Things line up in such a way that luck, coincidence, hard work, and planning make everything turn out right. Also, that's a pretty big stick. How are you going to use it, for good or for evil? Are you going to guide people with it or clobber them in the head with it? With great power comes great responsibility, right? This card is heavy with responsibility. Take care and be careful what you do with this stick. You could take your eye out. <clears throat> sorry, you could take your eye out if you're not careful. So again, it is massive potential here. And keeping in mind that wands is the element of fire. It represents the signs of Aries, Sagittarius, and Leo. It is very powerful type of energy. And like I mentioned, it is the steady flame going from the ace all the way to the 10 of wands being a wild a wildfire uh, something that is uncontrollable so very beautiful energy here we're moving now to the two of wands and this is a very uh, interesting card it is a card that has much interpretation to it depending on the cards that are around it or that are following it We'll speak more towards the message, but the man is looking into the world. It looks as if he's longing for adventure. Why then has he bolted his walking sticks to the wall of the castle? He's holding a globe, a representation of the whole world, yet he doesn't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon. 
It seems to be very conflicting, but I think it's about deliberation. He wouldn't be looking out in the world if he were content with his own kingdom. He wouldn't have the globe if he didn't wonder what it contained. I think that this card represents hesitation. Sometimes you can actually do have to look before you leap. I'm personally terrible at this, but I've heard it can be very effective. So again, the two of wands is a representation of, we go from the one, which is the planted seed or the idea. Two of wands is thinking or mulling over or wanting to set out. But before we actually take that action, before we actually get going, it is important to take a moment to reflect, a moment to take in where you're at, what the current situation is before deliberating, before executing or taking any type of action. So we move from the two of wands to the three of wands here. Now, the three of wands is also a very interesting card because if we look the three of wands in comparison to the two of wands, the two of wands, the character or the man was within the kingdom within the castle now if we look at the three here the three of wands he's no longer in the castle it seems like he's on a journey or has set out on a journey to the open road quote unquote or to um take some type of mo momentum there's a different scenery there is a different background here where the two of wands is hesitant, the three of wands is listening, watching, and getting ready to go. I think of the three of wands with the man as past, present, and future. He's literally literally turning his back on everything but the future. It's interesting that the three is outside and the two of wands is still within the castle. The three has already traveled some distance. There doesn't seem to be much ahead of him, but I think it's all about perspective. He sees amazing things. He sees his future, his ideals, and his success played out, played out ahead of him and just about to go for it. When this comes up in a reading, it often has to do with having itchy feet. You might be held back by other people, by circumstances beyond your control or by yourself or your own fears. It is about being able to take a moment in time to analyze uh, like I said, we go from the two of analyzation and thinking or pondering to the three, actually taking action, actually moving, taking some type of momentum, some type of moving forward. All right, so now we go to the four of wands. And this is one of my favorite minor arcanas. I love the four of wands. It is a very joyful type of energy, as you can see. It is yellow in the background, much like the three of wands. So we go from the three to the four. The three was taking some type of movement or have made some type of traveling, some type of momentum. The four is being able to take in or be in the present or be able to smell the roses type of thing. Walking through <clears throat> and ready to join the party. This is about celebration, joy, silliness, and the excitement of completion union family and friends this is one of the happiest cards in the deck and also one of the simplest four sticks flowers and a party i like the balance of the wands the flowers and the feeling of joy that resonates from the people in the town if you look at the position of the bower and the party in the basic deck this is the beat before the music begins the client has not approached the bower yet and still needs to go up the hill around the path and to the castle. There is so much potential here, but we're not moving yet. This card is a reminder to enjoy the moment. When I see this card come up in a reading for a client or um, whatever reading that I am doing, it usually indicates almost getting to the point of cause for celebration, some type of achievement, some type of um, major accomplishment here, but it can also uh, speak about some type of celebration, party, gathering, social outing. Um, of course, it can represent marriage as well, depending on the cards that are around it. But it's a very beautiful card overall. 
you go from the ace, which is potential and new beginning to the two of moving forward or thinking of the plans for the future. The three is the actual execution or movement, um, getting things going or taking basically the first leap of faith and taking action towards your goal or your desire. And the four is the manifestation of that. So beautiful energy here. Now we go to the very, very interesting card, the five of wands. Now I've mentioned to you guys on multiple occasions, fives are always, um, if you guys have seen our previous lessons uh, of the numbers and what they represent, the energies they carry, then you would know that fives always indicate a struggle, whether it's an inner struggle, whether it's a struggle with the world or the people around us, um, there's always a challenge. Five is always challenges. So with this card, if you look at it, everyone is like fighting and, you know, throwing sticks at each other. And it's like, and it could be, you know, interpreted in many different ways. But one of the main things here is competition and um, an actual fight, whether it's a disagreement with the family member, whether it's as an example, oftentimes uh, it is known, um, it's been uh, proven <laughs> that around the holidays is when people are most uh, prone for depression or anxiety. And why is that? Well, of course, we all love to be around our family, right? We love to be around our loved ones, et cetera. But when we're all put in a position or in a place together, it can be challenging. Why? Because everyone thinks differently. Everyone reacts in a very different way. Whereas you may get super along with, as an example, a cousin or a sister, um, there may be days where, you know, they just can't really deal with life and their temperament or their patience is very little and they get snappy. And it, all it takes is that little snap for you to be triggered and then a fight or discussion will ensue. So again, the five of wands is a representation of a struggle of a fight or <clears throat> conflict. There are a few ways to look at the five of wands. One is frustration and the other is competition. The person in the middle is completely surrounded by obstacles and has nowhere to turn. And no one seems to be interested in helping. It's difficult to see who's on the same team or if they're all fighting against each other. No one is going anywhere because all conversation is blocked. No one wants to talk. It's all sick, wa stick waving and what, <clears throat> what may seem like uh, no one actually taking this the time to take a step back or to even yell enough <laughs> uh, because it does give the depiction of just complete chaos, right? Um, no one is willing to hear each other out. No one is really uh, capable to concede an inch of ground. And so they're at an impasse. And how freaking frustrating is that? If you look at this card in the spirit of competition, you get completely different feel for it. All of the men are equally matched and the ones who work the hardest and train the most will be victorious. This card is very subjective and it really depends on the question asked, the position of the card and the client. This is a struggle that <clears throat> this is a struggle that he's gone into voluntarily on which he suddenly found himself. In this situation, you've got to decide whether it benefits you more to continue fighting upstream or to relax and go with the crowd. Get your stick out of my face, get your face out of my stick type of energy. This is the tarot equivalent of a slap fight. You're trying to go one way, everyone else is going another and they won't stop messing with you. Either way, it's annoying and taking time away from you moving forward or taking movement. So again, it's at being at impasse, um, an impasse, not being able to uh, get any type of momentum or get going because no one seems to get on the same page. So again, depending on the cards that follow, would speak a little bit more about the situation that's going on here. Moving on, we have this beautiful card, the Six of Wands, which is another one of my favorites in the Minor Arcanas. This is the equivalent of that of the chariot card. This is a very powerful card. It is talking about elevation. It is talking about on a grander scale, being admired, being respected, being received. Um, 
celebration of some type of return. Now, the story behind it is this was a, you know, uh, this was a soldier, a fighter that had gone away from home uh, to take on um, what soldiers do, right? What warriors do. And he's returning as a, as in victory. He's returning and they are celebrating him and they are admiring everything that he has accomplished. Now, one of the things that comes to mind when I see the this card is accomplishment. Um, another thing to take note is that of other people being or looking up to this person that is in, um, in the horse. So again, it is about being noticed. It is about uh, admiration. It is for some, it can also represent population or it can also represent some type of success where people actually look up to you. In this card, you can see the guy is above all others, literally. He's got uh, two wreaths and his horse is all decked out. He's sitting so straight and tall. This reminds me of, uh, as an example, Veterans Day. Um, <clears throat> when they are parades, heroes are being honored for their service and appreciated for their hard work and sacrifice. This card is optimism, hope, and excitement. This isn't always such a noble card, but it has the element of look what I've done, see all my accomplishments, self-confidence, a little bit of swagger, and a whole lot of pride. That's one of the things that this card definitely carries you guys, which is pride and confidence. Um, this card is similar to, like I mentioned, the chariot, but instead of a private version um, of you're the best, this is a very public, very public notion. It looks as if the person is being welcomed home. One of the things that I always notice with this card is that he's still moving. He's not finished yet. The horse is going on. So this is just a stop on the way to his goal. I think that most successful people never stop setting goals for themselves. There is always something more to accomplish. And this card definitely represents that. Now, like I mentioned to you guys, we don't really talk about reversals because it's quite the opposite of what we just spoke about. But because it does carry a lot of, like I mentioned, a lot of pride in this card in a reverse position would definitely represent a person that is a big, a bit egocentric, a person that is very much self-absorbed, um, someone that is... Uh, seeks a lot of validation through others. So moving on, we have here the beautiful seven of wands. And I say beautiful because though it may seem like a challenging card, it definitely speaks about uh, the self-growth or self-evolution of our emotional maturity and being able to have some type of realization of knowing when to put our foot down or when to stand up for our own selves. Seven of Wands um, is about taking a stand, drawing a line in the sand, standing on your own two feet, choosing a metaphor. The man is at the top of a hill, so he's worked hard to get there. All of those attacking him are beneath him. It's unclear whether they're trying to knock him down or are just being a pain in the ass. If you look at the bottom left corner of the basic card, it looks like he's right next to the edge of a drop-off. So his stance, um, there is tenuous and he's got to concentrate it's all about context it can mean either being confident or bringing the pain in readings this card comes up for a few different reasons tenacity is always present but in a different way the softest meaning is that you're literally working your way to the top you've got your goal inside you're doing what you need to take care of it next you are having to defend your goal or your path Someone is questioning you or doubting you, and they don't care whether you fail. In fact, they might be invested in seeing you fail. The challenge is now coming from outside rather than within. Like we spoke about the five of wands, the five is always a struggle. Uh, with the seven, it is a struggle not to overcome yourself, but to over overcome others that may be against you, may be betting against you, or that may have ill intent towards you. <clears throat> the challenge, like I mentioned, is now coming from outside rather than within. This change in motivation might affect how you carry yourself. Now, it's it gets interesting. This isn't just a challenge to your ideals. This is someone actively interfering with your life. It's rarely as straightforward as someone getting in your way. It usually 
uh, symbolizes like sneaky or annoyance. Uh, but the other person's goal is to knock you off track. This comes up a lot in readings uh, in which a sibling or a close friend or another family member is tossing roadblocks in your way. This is annoying, but sometimes works. Sometimes it's easier to uh, um, sometimes it's easier to settle, to not say anything, to be quiet, to bite your tongue than to ruffle others' feathers and cause problems. Uh, here, here's where it gets serious again. Cards change their meaning slightly depending on the question, position of the card, etc. Wands especially don't really have a stock answer. The serious meaning of this card is that someone is threatening you or your loved ones. I think that people forget that we have a fierce nature. You may not is a sentence that I don't hear often enough. You may not treat me like this. You may not bring that negativity into my life. You may not touch me. That's a no. This card is not only about being brave and deciding how far is too far, but also about deciding what kind of life you want to have. Do you want to allow toxic people into your space? Are you wanting to be more complacent so that you don't upset those around you? Do you want to permit people to treat you like garbage? Sometimes it's worth ruffling feathers to say no. Sometimes you have to, or your goal shifts and your roads become strange and unattainable. Then you have to fight to reclaim the distance you've lost. Sometimes you have to square your shoulders and tell someone to get the hell out of your face. And there doesn't have to be any politeness about it. So this card is a bit about confrontation, but having the courage to set boundaries, having the courage to look out for yourself, to protect yourself or your loved ones. Uh, it is about being unapologetically uh, courageous in your acts of protecting yourself and those around you. All right, moving on, my lovelies, we go now to the Eight of Wands. Now, the Eight of Wands is another card that is has many, many interpretations, but in fact, it is known as the Arrows of Love. So this can indicate it is almost the epitome of passion, right? <laughs> or a flaming, um, a flaming passion that is so driven in uh, the animal instinct of the human nature. So Eight of Wands is very intense. It is very passionate type of energy. The Eight of Wands catches that moment of release that feels like spring to me. There's so much potential surrounding that time of year. The burdens and troubles of the Seven of Wands are put to rest and the potential for new growth is upon us. There is a parable that speaks about a farmer who scattered seeds on the ground. Some of the seeds landed on a path and some were eaten by birds. Some seeds fell on poor soil and couldn't grow. But then we also had those roots, <laughs> the ones that rooted, the seeds that were in bloom, that grew. There has to be some kind of hope attached to the reason, to the season of growing. You can feel the bubbling of bubbling up of new life and see signs of growth poking through the snow. This is the eight of wands to me. Not achieving your goals, but starting them. Being brave and tossing your seeds in the air. Some of them will fail. This is true. Sometimes you will start and become frustrated and disheartened. But if you don't give up, you'll grow. I gave a reading recently to someone um, who had gone through many difficult experiences at a very short time. And when we were speaking about the future, I seen this card come up and I was ecstatic. I was excited because it is speaking about growth. It is speaking about being almost re-energized with the energy of being able to see transformation, being able to see life through different lenses uh, and being inspired by it. So it was definitely a calling to a different type of life for my client, which happened to be a bit interesting. Um, why? Because I saw that things were picking up quickly. And she said that she had decided to move to change her, her surroundings um, and to change possibly her fate. And she did exactly that. Everything was finally going in the direction she needed so that she could grow as well. I used to say overwhelming choices when I saw this card, but I think I was a bit off. The eight of wands is about choices. Yes, but instead of too many choices, it's about being aware of the paths that you can take. 
You can do anything, go anywhere you want. You can succeed and fail and discover and laugh and sob and grow and fall down. These are all possible. And it's glorious, really, if you sit and think about how beautiful life is. When I look at this card, I think of many possibilities. And like I mentioned, it is known as the arrows of love. So depending on what placement this card comes in, when doing a reading, it can predict that if there's been, as an example, a bit of a dull season when it comes to love, that the person that you're doing the reading for or yourself um, may go from a place of stagnation to very, very quick mo mo momentum. Sorry. Uh, this could indicate that the person uh, which thought had a very non-existing love life can go from non-existing to uh, literally feeling like they have to choose between um, options and possibilities. So a lot of passion here and a lot of excitement for sure. Moving on now, my lovelies, we go to the nine of wands. Now, I love this card for so many reasons, but the Nine of Wands does definitely talk about, um, if you look at the picture, the depiction is a man that is injured, a man that has been battered, that has gone through it, that has really been tested, right? Uh, this person is definitely not coming from like a camping trip or a picnic. <laughs> this person is definitely coming back from a battle. And the beauty in this is that though he seems tired and exhausted and beaten and bruised. He's still standing. And if you look closely, it may seem like he's holding the wand, but you often ask yourself, is he holding the wand or is he, you know, putting his weight on the wand to keep himself up? So again, it is definitely about tenacity in this card. It is about courage. It is about strength um, and the strength that it takes to be able to go through trialing or difficult situations in life and still having the you know tenacity, having the courage to stand and to say, bring it on and to continue on your path. This is a beautiful card, like I said, because it does speak about difficulty or coming out of some type of difficulty, but still coming out um, strong, coming out, uh, you know, with the, like I said, with the strength, with the courage, with the strong mind of towards or walking towards their uh, ideals, walking towards their goal. It's like through all the difficulty I've been through, I'm still keeping my eye on the price type of thing. The nine of wands reminds us to protect ourselves. We need time to heal. We need to reassess. Who can we trust? And, and we need to gather our resources after we've had the bejesus kicked out of us. We also need to keep an eye to those who are truly have our backs because that's a gift that needs attention and gratitude. The wands are so uh, reliant on the question asked, the person asking and the placement of the card. This man has obviously just been through it. Did he deserve the tail kicking he received? Um, maybe. All it did, though, was set his mind more firmly on his objectives. Another question that comes up is who did the thumping? Did he do this to himself with his self-destructive behavior? Was it a sneak attack or was he too trusting? Perseverance is one meaning of this card. He's not budging. That's for sure. You can tell that he's tired and that he's sore, but he's not bloody moving and he's daring anyone to try to make him. I get this a lot with people who are chronically um, ill and are still trying to maintain the lifestyle that makes them happy. The disease isn't going to change them, not if they can help it. Another meaning is protecting oneself. He's obviously been attacked and now he's ready. Unless inverted, our man has support. Some of his braveness is coming from his friend's hand on his back. Some of the strength is being willed to him, gifted to him, and he's accepting and is stronger for it. So as you guys can see, this also has a very beautiful message. It is, yes, we could go through it. We can, you know, experience uh, betrayal. We can experience heartbreak. We can go through so many things in life, but they are all lessons. And in those lessons, once we're able to learn from that, actually take time to heal, actually take time to take care of ourselves, to put ourselves back together, 
you become much more stronger because of it. So it's a beautiful, beautiful card. All right, and moving on now to the 10 of wands, like we spoke about from the very beginning, Aces is the massive potential, right? The the unlimited uh, possibilities and finally getting here to the 10 of wands. This is a wildfire. This is uh, too much, you know, sometimes too much is not necessarily healthy or good for us. Is this, um, as you guys can see in the depiction, it's a man that's holding you know, wands and he has his face looking down, not being able to fully see towards where he's walking or even, you know, you often have to ask yourself, are they even looking? Um, it is definitely caring a lot and not really paying attention to how the weight is distributed, not paying attention to uh, how this is affecting or where he's going or if he's even going somewhere. So there is a lot of questions in this energy. The 10 of wands shows a person carrying a huge bundle of sticks. This bundle can be stress, obligations, fear, hate, resentment, actual sticks, any number of things. Their back is sometimes bent head down and you can tell that in a few more steps, they'll drop everything or fall. Not only is the person carrying too much, they're carrying it improperly. There is no healthy version on this, on this journey. I'll bet that he's that it's not all his though. I bet that some of the the worry, the drama, the stress of his partner, his kids, his coworker, his boss, his friends, his family, his neighbors, etc. I'll bet that a lot of it has to do with worrying that he'll disappoint people. Worry what he's going to let if he's going to let someone down or make them angry or lose someone because he's not willing to shift their point of view. But look what he's doing instead. He's holding so many things so poorly. I might add that he can't see the ground in front of him and he's fixing to fall flat on his ass. How disappointed will the others be when you let the burdens fall to the ground along with your own and not seeing the ground in front of you? That's a big deal. If you can't see, if you're relying on the input and insight of others to show you the road, it's not yours anymore. You're walking the path of others and your joy is not going to be at the end of it. It's not authentic. It's not for you. And neither is most of the crazy that we carry around with us. The story is a great example of the Ten of Wands. This is a Buddhist story that can be found in the book Zen Shorts by John Muth. A young woman waited in front of <clears throat> a young woman waited in front of deep muddy puddles. She couldn't cross without getting mud on her clothes, and she scolded her servants who had their hands full with heavy packages for not helping her. A passing monk picked up, picked her up and carried her across the mud. To the surprise of his companion, not only did the woman not thank her, um, not only did she not thank her helper, she shoved him out of the way when he put her down. The companion later com commented on her rudeness. The helpful monk, uh, monk responded, I set the woman down hours ago. Why are you still carrying her? Why is it so hard to learn this lesson? So again, it is about being burdened, but uh, at what cost, right? At what expense? Sorry, my lovelies had to pause there for very quick. Uh, they were knocking on the door. <laughs> All right. So as we continue, the man in the card has everything taken care of. He's handling it. No problem. Except that he can't see the road before him and he looks so tired and sore. He's carrying so much that he's got to be in that numb, fuzzy state of where you're nearly ready to forget where you're carrying or where you're going. You just keep plodding along. In a reading, the important questions are these. Who is carrying this for? Who is he carrying this for? Sorry. Why won't he put it down? Why is he doing this? Why is he carrying them like that and deliberately blinding himself instead of figuring out a less stupid way to handle them? Finding out why you've burdened yourself so heavily is a good place to start. So there you go. 
All right, moving on here, we are now going into the Royals. And as you guys know, the Page of Wands, right? The Messenger. Page of Wands is Ernest Kid. He is present, childlike, and full of full of a lot of excitement. <laughs> Let's just say that. Uh, he's an optimist and a poet, a dreamer and inventor, an artist and a fiery lover. The Page of Wands is confident, is honest to a fault, is passionate, and will bring you with him. The charisma most often comes across in readings. You believe this guy and get excited about whatever he's excited about. The slamanders on the cloak speak about the fire element, of course. This is present in the wand suit. And he is sassy. Orange uh, britches might too. The page of wands is a novice, an apprentice. He's just gotten his wand and doesn't quite know what to do with it yet. He's holding on with both hands. And if he's knocked off course, he's going to drop it and wander around in circles for a bit. He is young and impetuous, but that's not only a bad, that's not always a bad thing. Creating to create, smiling just to smile. He is definitely an optimist. There is an innocence and fervor that makes this card very appealing. He's playing for himself. He's going to make mistakes and he's going to stop himself and drop his wand and start over again. But he's moving, 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 and it's beautiful. So the potential here is, Yes, it is a messenger. It also speaks about, um, obviously, communication, very passionate, uh, exciting communication or news coming your way. Uh, this can also indicate uh, a partner that perhaps is not that emotionally mature, uh, for some not even mature. Uh, this is a, a very spontaneous type of energy, someone that is very excited about anything that has to do with newness. Moving on here, we go now to our very passionate and intense Knight of Wands. Why do I say that? Well, this is a very passionate man. <laughs> I love this guy on so many levels, but it's kind of like he is amazing being a friend. But when we speak about relationships or partnerships, this is definitely not the one that uh, you can find either stability or uh, someone that you can definitely rely on is a definite no here. Uh, everyone loves this guy. He's confident, has so much swagger, and is jubilant. He's constantly on the go and always seems to have time for everyone. He's kind, compassionate, and engaging. In the basic deck, he's wearing the fiery salamander, and his armor covers everything but his face. This card is about being bulletproof. The best time for people to attack us is when we don't like ourselves. The Knight of Wands loves himself, you guys. And the only part of him that is exposed is his face. It's a small bit of <clears throat> vulnerability in an otherwise resilient person. It's also interesting because the Knight is traditionally very handsome and a wee bit vain. I would say extremely vain. Uh, his horse isn't only on the go, it's rearing back and it seems completely impatient. This card in a reading speaks to confidence and growth. It's about moving forward, even if you're unsure of the outcome. Charming, confident, and daring. A fierce friend and passionate, even when that passion can get him in trouble. He is strong and smart and makes things happen. He's unpredictable, enthusiastic, and very much like a bear on the loose. He wants, he takes. Someone takes something from him, he goes to get it. The knight is uh, raring to go and his friends are with him all the way. Some of them may get trampled in a few minutes, but it wasn't on purpose. And to be fair, the knight won't notice for a while anyways. This gives me the energy of, you know, that extremely, I'm sure we've all known someone like this, that they are extremely charismatic, extremely uh, flirtatious type of energy. It's someone that delights in attention. And it always seems like they're always on the go, but really they're always on the go because they don't stay long enough 
for something to materialize. So it's kind of like that person that uh, is just seeking um, anything that is exciting, anything that is new for the thrill of it. Like I said, when it comes to relationships and partnerships, if you're asking if the person that you're dealing with is a good suitor and the knight of wands shows up, it is someone that is, the cards are definitely telling you if you're looking to have a good time, if you're looking for excitement in your life, then this is definitely the person for you. However, be understandable that this is not the type of person that will stick long enough. Yes, they will give you the intensity, the passion, uh, but it's definitely not something that may become concrete. Why? Because like I said, they are always seeking adventure and that means that they won't stick long enough to actually some, see some type of stability here. Um, it's the friend that is extremely flirtatious that they don't kind of realize when they're overstepping. Um, it could be for you guys, as an example, if you're a guy, it's that confident friend that has a tendency of their personality is just flirtatious, even if they often flirt with your girlfriend or with your partner, but they don't really see it as offensive because that's just their personality. So that's the type of vibe and energy of the Knight of Wands. It is definitely a passionate energy. So again, if you guys are seeking to have an amazing time, even if it's temporary, then definitely go for that uh, if you need to shake up your love life <laughs> for a bit. All right, moving on here. We're going now to the Queen of Wands. Now, um, this queen is, out of all the queens, it is obviously a representation of the fire element. So it is a very strong, a very bold, a very... Uh, you know, straight to the point type of personality. Uh, this is speaking about an energy of a person that is extremely wise, obviously, because it is a queen. It is in a very mature state. Um, but this is kind of the person that is not going to uh, embarrass you or make some type of public display of embarrassment but they will pull you to the side and hit you with that staff, with that wand when you're acting a fool. Um, if you can see here, the cat, the black cat, it is also an indication of spirituality, of intuition, and sometimes even magic because she is holding the wand. So it is a person that is very connected or very capable of manifestation through their own will. Beautiful energy here. Now, when we talk about the queen of wands, the queen of wands energy is funny and warm, grounded and calm. The cat, the sunflower, and the sprouting wand are all signs of growth, of radiant energy and um, excitement. She's friendly and welcoming and find she comes up, uh, finds often finds that she comes up uh, with people with a great sense of humor. She has lots of energy, a lot of confidence, that's for sure. And she serves up a lot of opportunities to laugh your ass off, to laugh till you're crying and your eyes open wide with the lessons you've learned. I see a lot of the fool in her, that openness and that trusting that everything is going to be okay, even if sometimes she doesn't know how it's going to play out, but she's very, very hopeful. She might not know, um, she might not know what okay is going to look like, but she has faith. Don't be thinking she's a pushover, though. If you mess around, she will ever so gently club you with her pretty wand. Wands are about fire and action, and she won't suffer fools uh, silently. Do you know those women who can look at you, raise an eyebrow, and instantly make you question every single decision you've made in the past 20 minutes? Yeah, that's her. And that's definitely, definitely someone I know. <laughs> That, uh, like I said, they will definitely not, you know, call you out on your BS in front of people, especially if they care for you, but they have no problem pulling you to the side and telling you to get your shit together. Um, why? Because it is fire energy. They will not hold back, uh, but it is a gentle type of energy. Now, obviously, when we speak about the opposition or in reversed or inverted, um, it is quite the contrary to that energy. It is a person that is selfish, a person that is only about themselves and looking out for themselves and making sure that they look good, even if it comes at the expense of you. So 
Yes, like I was saying, um, you see the black cat is a sign of her edginess as well. She reminds me a lot of someone that I know, like I mentioned, um, usually because the cat, the black cat also speaks about edginess or shadow side or being able to fully embrace the shadow side. This person does not mind being different. They do not mind being center stage of anything. They actually flourish in attention. Um, so amazing energy here. All right. Now we're moving on to our lovely king of wands. Now this energy, obviously masculine energy, fire energy. So we have fire and fire, right? Fire, the element of fire with the spirit of fire here. Obviously, extremely, extremely strong character or personality. Um, the page, knight, and queen show the process of learning how to handle your business. The king of wands is the pinnacle of control. It is all coming from him. He's sitting casually, leaning forward and staring at you. No pressure. He is the instigator. The fire is difficult to manage in the other cards, but not with the king. With the king, the fire inside of him and he controls the burn. I always think that the king of wands is just about to stand up. He's sitting forward, backed by lions. He has a lizard at his, um, he has a lizard at his feet, um, which speaks about speed. Uh, the fire, the fire salamanders of his throne, which represents action. He has flames on his crown and a fiery orange robe and his hands are clenched. He looks like he's about to jump up and kick someone's ass, honestly, possibly also taking some names in the process. This card captures the energy of the wand suit, action, passion, and getting things done with the focus and confidence of a king. His wand is a step ahead of him, which is how his mind works. He is an artist, a passionate lover, and, um, and an idea man. You know those people who walk in a room and the other people in it automatically make room for them. There is a very subtle hush in the room as everyone takes measure of the new person and everyone is wondering who they are and how they did that. That's this guy. He's probably not a rock star. That's the page or the night, but he's a very successful manager of the rock star. In a reading, this can come up as an influence and putting yourself in the position of being an agent of change. It's about recognizing obstacles and leaping over them or going around them. Fire cards are all about movement, and this guy is the master of that movement. He has control, which is lacking in some of other words. If this card comes up for you, there is really nothing that you cannot do or anything that can get in the way between you and achieving your obstacle or sorry, not your obstacle, achieving your focus or your desired goal or outcome. This is when we're speaking about romantic lovers. This is definitely a much more mature type of energy. It is a person that though it is fire, very intense, very passionate. They are also very, very loyal. Keep in mind that the royals often represent Aries, Sagittarius, and Leo energy. And though Aries, when we speak about Aries, it is the baby of the Zodiac, right? Which is pure and uncontrolled energy of fire. Um, and though they may often be looked at as, you know, not necessarily extremely loyal, we go from the page, which is exciting and new ventures to the night, which is extremely passionate and just like, you know, like a hummingbird going from one rose to another, we go to the king and the king has already experienced all of that. This is a person that is extremely passionate, extremely devoted. And just as they are passionate and devoted, or just as much as excitement and passionate they are and creative, they are also very devoted because their intensity or their feelings run very deep. So again, very evolved type of mature energy, loyal to a fault, much like a Leo and, um, extremely, extremely exciting type of energy. I will give you guys a example. Um, I personally have dated a lot of Aries men in my life. Yes, it is in my eighth house. So those are the ones that I'm most attracted. There's just this automatic connection that happens. And, you know, I dated a person that was in Aries. They, uh, 
you know, we shared a lot of years together. We were actually together for about eight, nine years. And when I first started to get to know this person, their excitement, their just creativity, their spontaneity was something that was definitely very different to me, um, but very alluring. And everyone was like, you know, that's definitely not the energy that you want to kind of build a life around because they they were known for being, you know, the player, the the dated so many people. And we got to, or at least I got to see the different stages and different aspects of that dating and how it progressed to his undenying and devoted loyalty to me. So again, when you get the king of wands, when you're asking about a partner, whether it's female or masculine does not matter. This is the energy that they evoke. The king of wands speaks about a person that is very emotionally evolved or emotionally mature. So you're not looking for um, a boring person. This is definitely the person for you. This is someone that's going to keep you on your toes. If anything, it is the energy of someone that may uh, rattle you a little bit but it's for your self-growth and self-development. Why? Because they will definitely um, test you in certain aspects. But the positive in this is because they are emotionally evolved, they are emotionally mature, um, they're able to kind of inspire you and um, very exciting energy and passionate, by the way, <laughs> extremely passionate. It is the most passionate king of all the royals. So uh, moving on, actually, that is the end. I got all excited about that king. <laughs> all right, my lovelies, I hope you guys enjoyed these tarot lessons with the wands. And I hope you guys uh, stay tuned because we definitely have the cups coming up, the water element. And we are finally getting to the conclusion of the minors. If you guys are interested in any of the other tarot lessons, you can go to our playlist, look up Tarot Lessons 101, and you will have all of them on there. I want to wish you guys the very best and we'll see each other soon. Till then, bye.